So here we are again with Inky and Pac-Man. And now the problem we want to solve is we want to find the distance from Inky to Pac-Man. So we want to know how far Inky has to go to get to Pac-Man. Uh, and we already have the vector that Pinky wants to travel along to get to Pac-Man. And we can actually use that to find the distance because the length of the vector is exactly the same thing as the distance Pinky has to go to get to Pac-Man. So, if you remember from the first video, oops, uh, I need the paintbrush tool. From the first video, I need to get the right color the vector can be expressed two different ways. We can use an angle and the length. In this case the angle or the direction is down and to the left and the length is well however long this is you know it's that say it's 10 meters or whatever. Or we can represent it as XY and this is how we are representing it as XY in the computer. But because we're representing it as XY we don't have an immediate access to this length vector, of the, to the length part. <clears throat> we need to calculate that. But fortunately for us, it's pretty easy to do. We can do it with uh, using a triangle. Because we're storing x and y, and the x and y create a right triangle. Here's x and here's why and this is a right triangle we can use the Pythagorean formula if you need a refresher on the Pythagorean formula I have a few links right here that you can go to to, to see how that uh, gets derived but for now um, I'll give you a quick refresher it's a squared plus uh, wait, let's do it this way equals b squared plus c squared Okay, so our, uh, what we want to find is the length of the vector, and we can denote that by putting bars around the outside of the vector. These bars mean the vector's length. Okay, and in this formula, A is the hypotenuse, and our vector length is the hypotenuse. So A is the vector length. And all we're going to do is we're going to fill in values. We're just going to replace values in our Pythagorean theorem to what values we're using. So we have the vector length is A. So I'm going to say A squared because A is squared here. And then B, we're going to say B is X. So we're also going to square it. Let's write it this way. The X component of B squared. And then C is going to be Y, so the X, the Y component of V squared. Okay, now all we have to do is solve for the length of the vector. And all we have to do to do that is take the square root of both sides of this equation. And that will give it to us. So. Uh, these two cancel out, the square and the square root cancel out, and we get that the length of this vector is the square root of, and I'm going to dispense with the uh, vector notation, I'm just going to say x because it's simpler, but I mean the same thing, x squared plus y squared, where this x and y are the x and y components of the vector. So great, that's uh, still pretty straightforward. That'll find us the length of the vector or the distance of uh, between Inky and Pac-Man. So let's implement that in code. Okay, here we are and you can see I've added a length method to the vector class that returns a floating point number that will be the length of whatever vector this is. And you can also see this const. What does const mean? Const means that the length function promises not to modify the vector in any way because you don't need to change the vector to find its length. So we're going to promise that we won't change the vector at all and that's what the const keyword means. It's actually uh, kind of a fad these days to 
have everything const correct. For example, John Carmack, the guy who wrote uh, Doom and Quake and more recently Rage, um, he is all the rage, so to speak, about having const correctness everywhere in the code. And so we're going to focus on that as we're writing this length function. So here's the definition of the length function down here. First, we will create a length floating point variable. This is where we're going to store the result that we're going to return in the function later. And let's assign it to something. We have to take the square root. Here's our formula over on the right. Square root. Uh, this is the square root function. It just takes a square root. That's all it does. And we're going to say x times x plus y times y. And that's it. We're using, uh, we're just multiplying x by itself instead of using like a special power function or a squared function because it's just really fast just to tell the computer to multiply x by itself to square something. So that's all we're going to do. And then we'll return that length. Uh, and that's it. So let's go down, 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 down to where you can see this is all the same code as before. It'll calculate the vector from Enki to Pac-Man and give it to us V. So now we're going to call V.length and we should get a length out from it. I'll put a breakpoint here so we can step in there and see how it works and let's run this bad boy and see what happens. So here we are, this uh, yellow arrow, arrow, I'm not sure you can see. Mm. This yellow arrow right here means that that's uh, the line of the code we're on right now. So we're gonna step into the length function. And you'll notice that we don't have to modify any of the variables that we're accessing in order to calculate the length, which means that we retain const correctness, which is good. And so we're going to calculate the length, which is 2.236, a rather weird number. And we're going to return it. And sure enough, there it is. 2.236 is the length of any vector that is one unit long on one side and two units long on the other side. So that's it. Now we know how far we have... We, uh, Inky has to go to get to Pac-Man. It has to go 2.23607 units. In the next video, we're going to talk about a shortcut that we can take when we're comparing distances to different objects uh, that can save us a lot of processing time. I'll see you next time.